When I was 27, I had an epiphany. I had been following my passion for 12 years. Um, I had been dancing, performing, teaching, doing what I loved. But for the last three years of that 12 years, I was deeply, deeply unhappy. I felt like there was something missing from my life. I felt like there was something I could be doing more. And I struggled to find the root cause of this unhappiness. And of course, with a little bit of help from family and friends and self-introspection, I realized that it's absolutely possible to lose sight of your identity, yourself, and who you are, even if you're doing something that you truly love and not following the daily grind. Now, it was really difficult for me to accept that I was unhappy dancing because this is what I had chosen to do and this is what I was happy doing, right? So to use the word unhappiness in relation with what I was choosing to do, my passion, so to speak, was a really tough reality for me to accept. After making a few really big life changes, and as is the case uh, most of the time, only big life changes will help you you know, shuffle things up in your life and find root causes of unhappiness, I realized that it was not enough for me to have a passion. That the passion was weighing me down. That the commitment and the belief with which I was following my passion was weighing me down. And that's when I chanced upon this magical word called self-actualization. I realized that being aware of who you are from inside, internal versus external, was so important towards being able to deal with the everyday reality of life. The more I danced, the more I realized that I was doing it internally. And the more I danced internally, the better I felt externally. So it stopped being about dancing for an audience. It stopped being about performing for a client. It stopped being about uh, being the best there is in the industry. It started being about what can I do with my dancing. And that's when I chanced upon the second big epiphany in my life, passion marries purpose. It is not enough to have passion in life. You have to find your purpose. Now, I realized that my purpose was to cause and effect change in people's lives. And the medium with which I, I could do that was dance and performance, the stage, so to speak as well as the classroom, because teaching was something else that I really, really enjoyed, teaching whatever knowledge I had in the performance arena. So when your passion marries your purpose, the end result of that marriage is such a beautiful amalgamation of uh, being able to figure out where your life is heading, being able to resolve things from the past, being able to effect change in other people's lives and society at large. And when these two things met, the self-actualization and then my passion with a purpose, was born arts activism. What is arts activism? It's using your art, using your understanding of your life in art to bring about awareness, change, cause debate, give rise to questions, find solutions, start conversations about things that are truly important, not about being viral, not about being popular, not about being the best. Success is defined very differently by different people. But to me, I think success comes when you are truly happy from the inside. And when you're truly happy from the inside, everything that you do in life becomes about doing it for the sake of doing it and not for anything else, not for likes, not for applause, not for approval, not for uh, one million views, if you know what I mean. So for me, the journey from being a dancer who wanted to be seen, who wanted to be the best, who wanted to be noticed, to being a choreographer, a teacher, and somebody who affects change in other people's lives, the journey has been a magnificent one. It has been a really uh, self-taught, self-learned, and fraught with a lot of life experiences and hard hits and hard knocks. And one of the things that I constantly faced 
was being a woman in a man's field, which is extremely common. And also being a woman who comes from a background that's traditionally known for its academics, traditionally known for uh, education, education, PhDs in you know, multiple science and technology and banking and teaching and law. Nobody dances in our community was something that I heard a lot. It's time you got married <laughs> was something that I heard a lot. Luckily, not from my own family, but from, of course, external sources. And I realized that doing things for the sake of other people's approval, doing things because you've been socially conditioned that by 28 you have to be married with 2.5 children, um, was not something that, that was written in my path. So I decided that I would stand up for what I think I would like to call everyday feminism. So if, even if it means fighting with the misogynistic watchman who uh, likes to uh, pretend that you don't know anything and you need protection and you know, he has to handle things for you and take care of your business for you, or the well-meaning uncle who likes to advise you about uh, your location of your business and whether it's running well or uh, give you financial advice, whether you need it or not, or whether you asked for it or not. For me, fighting everyday misogyny has been my true journey of feminism. Proving to people that, yes, I can wear a sari and walk into a hardware store and ask for a tea joint even if the guy believes I don't know what that means. Yes, I can dress up in short clothes and go out dancing, but at the same time be deeply rooted in my tradition and my culture as well, get up the next morning for a puja. I, I've realized that it's all about balance. It's all about really being internally aware. Fighting that struggle has taught me four things. When you try to marry your passion with your purpose, you have the struggle, you have the survival, you have the significance of what you are doing. So obviously, the struggle is when you are trying to uh, you know, make it, make it, trying to establish a name for yourself, trying to keep your head above water financially, trying to get by every day and make sure you have three square meals on the table. Survival is a little bit more than that. Once you've managed to get past the struggle, you need to survive with everything around you, the external influences, the sharks, the the obstacles that you will face in running your arts business, because it's arts and you're trying to make it a business and you're trying to keep the two uh, true to their form and not dilute one from the other. And of course, that's the everyday struggle. And I don't think the struggle stops, even if you've reached a particular position, as people like to call it. For me, it's, I just call it steps. And then you know you climb and walk and explore. And it's like a giant garden. It, there's no. There's no literally you climb up the steps and you're at the top. There's no top. I think it's just you make your own top and you make your own pathway and picnic benches through the garden. And of course, the significance of what I'm trying to do. I constantly have people telling me, you know, you're too idealistic. The things that you believe in are not going to uh, probably give you any kind of uh, name or fame now. Maybe when you're dead and gone, 100 years down, people will talk about you like they did about the famous painters who were not known in their times. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm not doing what I do for people to talk about me. I do have legacy goals, which is to leave behind something concrete of value that can be utilized, used, and taught, and passed on to generation after generation after generation. But the idea is not to say, oh, Aparna did it. She was so famous. The idea is to say, oh, we have this resource, we have this tool, we have this knowledge. How can we tweak it, use it? And of course, my, the knowledge that I glean today may not be relevant three years down the line. It may have to be modified. So I find that being able to completely self-actualize yourself from an internal perspective, be aware of human nature and understand human nature, and then be able to marry your passion and your purpose. Finding your purpose and then fueling it with your passion has really helped me grow and be a good human being, which is not an easy thing to do. It's really tough to be a good human being. But I, from a very selfish perspective, I think being a good human being means 
you inspire yourself every day first. And then you set out to inspire the people around you, and the people around them, and then the world at large. Thank you very much. Tell us what you think about this video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.